Hello everybody, welcome to Snyder's Inc. I know it's late, but I had a life to do and I hung out with some people. And here we go, we're gonna get right into this. We got no time to waste. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Today is the newest Nick Crowley video and it is the Internet's Darkest Corners Part 3. I know this came out yesterday, I didn't get time to do it. We're gonna do it now. Ladies and gentlemen, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, comment, stick down below, let's go. It is the early morning, and the working day of the steam locomotive and its crew is just beginning. It was the 31st of August, 2023. A typical day for 34-year-old Michael Zanera, as he had yet again spent his afternoon working hard on the railway. Michael was a welder who had been putting in long hours repairing train tracks in northern Italy, a job he seemed to thoroughly enjoy, as he'd often post various images and videos onto his TikTok page, showcasing this unique work that he was doing. By this point, this was the type of content that you typically expect from Michael, with some other images and various memes sprinkled in here and there, cultivating into a rather inconspicuous page that, for the most part, flew completely under the radar. Or at least it did, until that final day of August, when Michael would encounter one of the strangest moments of his entire life. The post he'd share was just a single image, showcasing what appeared to be one of the tracks he had been working on, with a strange glowing cross at its center. For more context, Michael would write, It's the first time this has happened to me while I'm balancing the rail. The crucifix came out. God definitely wants to tell me something, even though I've been calling him every day lately, because it's not a good time for me. It was quite the strange coincidence, especially considering that Michael himself was known to be very religious and a devout believer in God, and he had been called. That is interesting. The odds of him being a Christian who's been reaching out to God, trying to get in contact with God, and just after, as he's been trying to do it, the random cross comes out. Ah. Uh, out of the uh, one of the tracks he's been working on like that is uh that is insane calling out to god for months looking for some sort of sign to help him out of this dark patch that he had found himself in and in his mind this inexplicable red cross was it it had to mean something but he just couldn't figure out what and so we posted the image to TikTok to share it with the world before continuing on with his work, likely having the vision of this cross looming in the back of his mind all day, trying to figure out what exactly this could be foreshadowing. And just 24 hours later, he would get his answer. Oof. An investigation's underway after five railway workers were killed by a speeding train in northern Italy. They were working on replacing parts of the track at the Brandizzo station near Turin when the locomotive slammed into them. On the 1st of September, 2023, just one day following Michael's post, he and six others had been continuing their maintenance on the tracks when, out of nowhere, a train would come hurtling towards them at a speed far too great to properly react to, as according to reports, the men had been working late at night welding train tracks. As they were busy going about their job, an oncoming train headed straight towards them at 100 miles per hour, killing most of the team of workers and throwing their bodies hundreds of meters in the air. Within that group, five of the seven men would tragically perish, with the victims being named as Kevin Lagana, Giuseppe Servillo, Giuseppe Lombardo, Giuseppe Aversa, and Michael Zanera, who was pronounced dead at the scene passing away on the very tracks that just one day prior had yielded what he and many others believed to be a sign from God. The cause of this tragedy is still currently under investigation, with early reports- That is insane, so he thought he was giving a sign from God, the guy- the sign was you're coming up with us bro, cause you're about to be smoked fucking head off by the train, going 100 miles per hour. 
I'm surprised, like, if these guys are working, because you would think there's a time they would go start welding at night because they know no trains are coming. I guess either there was a miscommunication they were wrong or they just mistimed when the train came. Or it's hinting at it being nothing more than a tragic accident. And whether this glowing red cross was some sort of divine intervention or just simply an eerie coincidence, Michael's final post remains haunting nonetheless. It has now found a permanent home in the internet's darkest corners. They know that the only right track is away from the tracks altogether. One of the most startling facts about witches is that there are more of them today than ever before. Before we dive into our next rabbit hole, I want to first thank today's sponsor, Grammarly, for making this video financially viable. First. Husband died or come on. To her husband, she must be a companion, a sweetheart, a wife, and a mother. She must know how to make her home comfortable and inviting. Husband died or come on. Our next case takes us to Japan, where 18 years ago, one of the strangest websites that I've ever come across would be launched for the world to see. Now to properly understand its context, it's important to note that in large part, Japan is a country that culturally looks down on the practice of divorce. So much so that in most cases, a partner can't separate on their sole discretion, and it must instead be approved by both parties, making it a difficult thing to achieve in general. And those that actually are able to go through with it are often judged in an extremely negative light, especially by their family members. Oh, you were not allowed to meet that because I was like, I'm divorced, I'm, I'm divorced. I'm like, you, you, you should be ashamed of yourself. I said, you should go fuck this. <laughs> I don't want to be with my bad name. Oh, I'm in the damn relationship. What do y'all do if you don't want to be together? You just go your separate way? Like, hey, you go your way. I go mine. We just stay together. We're just still married, though. Like, what do you... For these reasons, couples will often wind up being stuck together regardless of their feelings towards one another. And it's this very sense of being trapped with- That is how couples die! That is how murders and that are committed! Is bullshit thought process like that! Someone that you don't actually love, that can lead to emotions turning sour very quickly, with many eventually reaching the point of pure hatred for their spouse. Hatred that has led to the rise of one of Japan's darkest websites. Danasheen.com, or in English, husbanddie.com. The forum takes inspiration from the manga Death Note, a series in which characters write a name in a book, which ultimately leads to their demise. It's a manifestation of sorts, and on Danasheen.com, users are given an outlet to manifest death upon their husbands. But this goes far past just typing their name out and hoping that they eventually perish. Instead, each post contains some sort of description as to why their husband is so hated, and how they wish that they would just... Seems to have a development disorder, and my children probably have something too. My own girl going crazy to this fire, do have time to rest. Husband, husbands only patronize themselves. When a marriage fails, you become unhappy. At least if birth... At least if my birth and husband would be gone, my stress would be haved. Please, God of death, please. Die already. What do I have to do to get you to die? Hurry up already. I pray for it every single day. You're the most selfish person I've ever met. Even the kids hate you, so there is no need for you here. My life started its downfall because I met you. You should have never become a husband or a father. I'm the one who is the biggest fool in all of this for not being able to see that until it was too late. Just f disappear from this universe. Just disappear. I keep telling myself that I will be patient until my child becomes of high school age. But every day is nothing but pain. Don't you understand that when you say you won't show your smartphone, you're admitting it? Reserve insurance. Full expectation. Die before that and make amends. Posts like these are littered across the site, with thousands of women venting their allegations of infidelity, neglect, and even abuse at the hands of their own husbands. Allegations that society would likely frown upon if they were said out loud and allegations that would likely lead to divorce, which would be considered far too taboo. And so, with nowhere to go to with these issues, this site has become a space for women to share their dark feelings with others going through these similar issues. Though this goes far past just venting. As you- I was about to say, there has to be like, this would be where a hitman's dream list would be, right? This is a hitman's dream area right here. 
Just give you can make up a bunch of fucking shit here. Users will go as far as to outwardly celebrate the deaths of their husband when it finally does happen. My husband died. Finally, he died. Thank you for granting the god of death my wish. I will spend a lot of time laughing from now on. To which a user responds, Congratulations. I envy you. I want to sleep too. I hope that your future will be wonderful. God of death, I also want to be freed from my damn husband. Please take ours with you as well. This concept of the god of death is one that is mentioned countless times across this forum, making it apparent that users genuinely believe that their posts are manifestations, and essentially prayers to this god of death, in the hopes that they will then kill off their troubled husbands. And the Donashin site leans into this too, taking credit for the numerous deaths with a monthly counter that's proudly displayed on the site's homepage. It's this very god of death that so many place their trust into in order to end the lives of their spouse, praying for things like car accidents, heart attacks, and a variety of other terrible health conditions. But while many eagerly wait for their manifestations to come to light, others aren't so patient. I want to somehow find a way to kill my husband without getting caught. I'll pretend to be sad when he dies, so please really die? I hate him from the bottom of my heart, and if I make him shut up, I would win. I hate myself for why I married such a person. This post in particular has become one of the more notorious entries on the site, given its user's outward admission of their murderous desire. Though truthfully, it's one of thousands, as many others even take this a step further. Like one post that was so disturbing that YouTube made me remove it from this video, as it quite literally gave step-by-step -step instructions on how to poison your husband without him noticing, mentioning how they slipped up to 1200 milligrams of this certain drug into their husband's drinks every single- THAT IS INSANE! So this, there was someone who gave complete instructions, step-by-step -step instructions, on how to on how to poison your husband. That is insane. Today, a drug that would slowly cause the liver to fail, but would likely never really be noticed by regular hospital staff, making it essentially a foolproof way for them to kill their husbands. And this is one of many posts like this, outlying how to murder your husband and get away with it, with many even reporting their progress as it happens, due to the fact that poisoning someone in this manner takes months and even years to successfully complete. Everything about Donashin.com is terrible, as the posts themselves are twisted enough, but you also have to factor how bad these women's lives are at home, many of whom are quite clearly stuck in abusive relationships. And beneath all the darkness of this site is another layer that's honestly just very sad, as there are many users who call to the god of death to take themselves, accepting that there is no escaping their situations and not wanting to deal with it anymore manifesting accidents and health issues onto themselves as to not shame their family by intentionally their own lives. Despite the depressing and concerning nature of this entire website, Donashin.com still remains relatively active all these years later, and really? stands as one of the darkest rabbit holes that I've- That is insane! Like, the thing is a site that people still go on to this day, to complain about their husbands and complain about how they wish they were like people would die, either husband would die or themselves would die to get away from the husband. Like that is fucking insane. Like that is a relationship I couldn't imagine being in. I couldn't. I wouldn't stay in a marriage if I was unhappy. No way. I've gone down all year. Its engines are warming up, and inside the cab sits Mr. Schroeder, the engineer who has driven locomotives for many years. The safety of all the passengers depends on his skill and watchfulness. Last call from... Fire Department, Pyramid of 58, what's the address of the emergency? Uh, yeah, um, I'm on the Metro League train, we just left uh, Northridge. We had a collision with something, we have a whole bunch of people who are now bleeding and on the floor. Is that train? It's the Metrolink train. What type of train crashes into someone and keeps going? Just keep go did it just keep going? Did the train leave the did the train leave the side of a cro scene? What? This call was placed to 911 on the afternoon of September 12th, 2008, by a patron trapped inside a derailed train. Inside the cart, there was no way to fully understand the traumatic event that they had just survived. 
as around them stood nothing but mangled debris that once comprised two large trains. Trains that had violently collided at a combined speed of 83 miles per hour, head on. I have always been confused, man. I don't understand trains, okay? I'm the last person who can say they understand how trains work. I don't understand how trains work. I don't get at all how trains work, okay? And we'll make that clear. I just, how do two trains be put in a position where they can even collide hand on? Do one go off the rails? Off their tracks and into him? Like, cause there's no way to should be in a position where they're able to collide head on either, anyway. What? I, it, obviously, there's probably an easy answer to this, but my brain's not smart enough to figure it out. It was gruesome. As trapped within that twisted metal were hundreds of passengers who had taken the commuter train in California's San Fernando Valley. And as the smoke would eventually clear on the tragedy, the question was quickly posed, how could this have happened? A question that wouldn't take long to answer. Okay. According to the NTSB, the Metrolink passenger train responsible for carrying over 200 commuters had been given a red signal alerting them to merge into an oncoming track in order to avoid an oncoming Union Pacific freight train, which at the time only had crew members aboard. Based on their positioning, the Union Pacific freight train had the right of way, though despite this and being given the clear signal, Metrolink's engineer Robert M. Sanchez failed to adhere. In fact, despite the impending collision seemingly being imminent, the brakes were never so much as tapped, a startling phenomenon that is only really understood when sifting through the man's phone records. Meanwhile, authorities are now confirming the engineer had been text messaging the day of the accident. In the minutes leading to the collision, Robert Sanchez had sent out numerous texts, including some to friends of his who were fellow train enthusiasts. And these messages seemingly distracted him to the point of not just missing the signal, but failing to notice the massive hurtling train coming directly towards him. In the end, Robert would be killed in- How on earth does a tra- You stupid fuck! You are a train conductor, you can't be, you are not just responsible for you, you're responsible for 200 motherfucking people in your train. How on earth do you forget that and just somehow start texting and training? It's not even driving, you're texting and training and you're fucking somehow still freaking it up. Instantly in the rack, along with 24 others, all the while, 135 people were left with serious injuries. But despite how notorious this collision has since become, thanks in large part due to Robert's behavior leading to it, it has since gained additional notoriety on the internet, thanks to a key detail centered around another cell phone. Following news of the collision being broadcast all across the area, Andrea Katz, the fiance of 49-year-old- I thought it was this! I'm like, I was like, is this the one? Where there's a 911, there's a phone call from a person who was dead in the in the train. I remember there's a train crash where someone died in the train, but they left a they had called the wife, like the the after they had already died. Their wife got a phone call from their phone after they had died already. The Charles Peck immediately began to panic as she knew Charles was on board the train at the time of this collision. Her nerves were initially quelled, however, as she would realize that on her phone were multiple missed calls from Charles. Realizing this, she quickly called him back, though there was no answer, which was made a bit more unusual as, only minutes later, Charles would call her back once more. Upon answering the phone, nothing could be heard but the low sound of static. Before, they would be disconnected. This very same thing would happen once more, and then again and again, all the while occurring at various intervals, as Charles seemed to be desperately calling, yet saying nothing. And when Andrea would try and call back herself, she would be sent straight to voicemail. And things became even more alarming from here, as numerous other family members began to receive these very same mysterious calls, to which not a word was ever spoken. This led to the whole family believing that Charles must be trapped somewhere in the wreckage, and was likely unable to speak due to his injuries, but was somehow managing to send these calls as a way of letting them know that he was in fact alive and just needed saving. Nope. Because of the- Now that's not the case. This guy's already dead. He's just giving y'all one last call. Each every member one last call to let you know, to say goodbye, and even though while he's unable to, 
Maybe you find peace in the cause, is what the Hulk probably was. This, his family members would cheer him on and give him words of encouragement every single time he called, assuring him that rescue was on the way. And sure enough, authorities would use these calls to pinpoint Charles' exact location, with the coordinates being right at the very center of the debris. And using this, rescuers would clear the way until finally, after 12 long hours, Charles Peck would be found. Which leads us to the strangest part of this story. He's dead. Charles was dead. And not freshly dead either, as it was quite obvious that he had died directly on impact. Meaning that there was no physical way that he could have possibly made these calls, yep. as he quite literally was not alive for any of them. And yet, that day, his son, his brother, his stepmother, his sister, and his fiance all received numerous calls from him, 35 in total, and all spread out over the course of numerous hours. To this day, this bizarre phenomena has never fully been explained, with some theorizing that it must have been some sort of phone glitch, or maybe even another passenger who had found his phone and was placing calls to all of his recent numbers, though an official conclusion has never actually been given. And even stranger, Charles Peck's phone was never found. Yeah, that's a little weird. They never found his phone. Either, so they have no idea. Did someone just take his phone? Like, that'd be weird. He crashed or someone who was alive just took his phone and then started calling people. Like, that'd be really weird. If you did, if that would, that is what happened. That's really fucked up. I've never been so glad to get rid of somebody in my whole life. Oh, we got witch September 19th, a man is crushed and tortured to death under the suspicion of practicing witchcraft. September 22nd, eight individuals are hanged on the same charges. And October 17th, four elderly women were hanged upon the belief that they too were witches. These stories will likely ring a bell with many watching today, especially those who are living in the United States, as back in the 1600s, in the small town of Salem, Massachusetts, a bizarre mass hysteria had unfolded. To think that there were people, right, who just get accused. You just get accused of witchcraft, and they find something that happened, even if nothing else adds up, they will find you guilty and kill you. They don't even really put in much effort. They didn't know how to do trial back then. They were just like, oh, y'all hot. Did you do it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what happened? You started coughing? Oh, clearly it was witchcraft. Camp hanger. Leading to the deaths of 25 people, all of whom had been incorrectly labeled as witches. Okay. The Salem Witch Trials are one of the darkest and most notorious tales ever told, given just how unusual the whole event was as it just seems so hard to imagine a situation like this actually occurring. And most would understandably believe that something of this nature could never happen again, failing to realize that it actually already has. In fact, of the opening three executions, only two happened during the Salem Witch Trials, with the latter happening just two years ago. What? <laughs> Where? Where? Fucking where? Where did this? Where? What area in the world is using witchcraft? A belief of witchcraft is stealing the thing. You, you in 2020, you better have some hard evidence to say that they're doing witchcraft and that their witchcraft actually is involving something. You better not be sitting there just pointing it and they just say you did it and you just take their word for it. Don't you be doing that? You're 2021. You're way better than that. You all know it. You all know they're better than that. The practice was first reported to the Western world back in 1993 when the LA Times would feature an article titled Kenyan Villager Suspicions Fear Spark Deadly Witch Hunt. Evil lurks beneath the tranquil facade of two Highland districts, where vigilantes have burned to death 44 men and women accused of practicing harmful witchcraft. The article goes on to explain how, since the previous summer, 44 men and women accused of practicing witchcraft had been burned to death in Kissy, as well as other nearby towns, a number that's nearly double the entirety of the Salem Witch Trials. In most cases, village mobs had formed, some several hundred strong, locking the suspected witches in their home and setting fire to the structures as they were trapped inside. 
Do, do you know there was a- Do you just have a sense you got to bring in? They might be doing whiskey. Well, better burn the fucking building. Like, what? It makes no sense to me. Dying. For more context, witchcraft is known to have deep roots in African culture. And despite many not having an issue with the practice in general, in the county of Kissy, a deep fear had grown over black magic in particular, with the villagers becoming paranoid that members of the community had been using said black magic to negatively influence the area. Huh. Despite okay. the shocking claims made within the article, not much would be spoken of these witch trials following its release to the public, and remained relatively unknown until the rise of the internet. Witches in Kenya resulted in 11 people being burned to death Eight women and three men were attacked by an angry mob and set on fire. They burnt down over 60 houses like this and brutally murdered 15 people. Most of them were elderly women. The charred corpses of 11 elderly Kenyan villagers. I is so messed up. That is so messed up. I can't believe that. My brain doesn't know how to fathom that. Oh my God. Burn buildings without a second thought. Just you don't even try. You don't even do trials. You just say guilty. If they say you must, if you, they say you did it, they must have done it. Whatever you got doesn't matter. They said it, so you must have done it. You're burning the death. Accused of practicing witchcraft. In this incident three months ago, villagers watched as a group of youths torture five suspected witches. Nowadays, incidents from the Kissy area involving witches being killed are heavily documented by villagers with cell phones, capturing images and videos of beatings, public shamings, and eventually the killings of these alleged witches, providing some of the most chilling imagery I've ever seen on the internet, and exposing the true horrors of this practice all across the world. And what's scariest of all is that it's not just one or two people doing the killing in secret, it's often the entire village. As anyone brave enough to step forward in support of them would be labeled as a witch sympathizer and potentially face the same punishment. And what makes this all even more disturbing is that in the vast majority of examples, the accused witches that are being tortured, set on fire, and beaten are usually elderly and are far too frail to do anything but accept their fate. Which brings us to the biggest question in all of this, why? Well, despite the practice of executing witches being ingrained in this area's history, it's supposedly only really within the past 40 years or so that things have progressed into the barbaric attacks that they've become today, prompting some to believe that the ingrained fear of black magic has led to some sort of mass hysteria among the villagers, causing them to react in such a crazed manner, which has remained persistent for years on end now. Though there is one other element to consider, in the Kissy region, land is one of the most valuable things you can own, and coincidentally, when these supposed witches are killed, it just so happens to free up their land for the taking. Which makes it all the more interesting when you consider that most of these victims just so happen to be elderly landowners. And it goes even deeper than that, as not only are these elderly landowners killed, but due to their designation as witches, the family members they leave behind are usually exiled or even killed due to their relationship. So it might not even be that they're witches. It, they might not even actually even have the belief of it. They just say, hey, look, there's land that's free of. Let's just say they're witches. We'll kill the elderly. We'll send their family on their way. We just got some land free. Kishi, I picked up your skills there, but I figured out what y'all are doing. That's some sneaky, slimy shit y'all are doing right there. Relation to the witch meaning that the land can't be passed down to their next of kin as there would be no family left in the area, making that land essentially open for the taking, thus allowing the accuser or accusers to take ownership. The incentive is certainly there for people to take advantage of this widespread fear of witches in order to essentially get free land with no real punishment. And I honestly think this greed surrounding land at the very least plays a role in this whole situation. Yep. Though truthfully, I wouldn't be surprised if this was some sort of combination of culture, mass hysteria, and land all rolled into one, leading to the worst of humanity being brought out. It's definitely a mix. There's definitely mass hysteria. There is a there has to be. 
there was a belief that witches are there, and once the accusation is made, you pretty much have no way out of it, and it makes you, it makes everyone look bad. It makes everyone look bad. And though the local government has taken steps to help end this violence, these three factors may prove too much to ever see the practice fully end. And as long as it's happening, the internet will be there to capture it all. Last try. Taylor Scrum began her TikTok account back in October of 2020. Being just 20 at the time, Taylor had fallen in love with all things motorcycles, dedicating her life and the entirety of her TikTok page to this hobby of hers. Through the following years, Taylor would post various memes and inspirational videos to her page, helping her amass a decent following along the way, with fellow riders appreciating the more niche aspects of her content and her attempts to break the stigma surrounding female motorcyclists. Though not all of her postings were without controversy. Okay. On various instances, Taylor would film videos of herself driving recklessly, soaring well past the speed limit, and performing various dangerous tricks while on the road. With the stunts growing concerning enough to the point that TikTok began adding disclaimers to numerous of her videos, stating, Participating in this activity could result in you or others getting hurt. Many of the things that Taylor had been showcasing on her page were downright reckless, and she seemed to acknowledge this all the while, joking about it across various videos on her page. <laughs> Leading some to believe that Taylor had a death wish, or she seemingly just couldn't believe that a rider of her caliber could ever get into an accident. That's the stupidest thought process I could ever imagine. If you're that stupid, get a grip. If you ride a bike and believe there was no way you could do whatever, there was no way you would ever get into an accident, you're an idiot. Get a, get a brain there. Get some knowledge. Get, get some sense. Because that is stupid thought process hinting at this on numerous occasions and showing no signs of changing her behavior. And she continued doing so all the way up until the 23rd of May, when her most notorious video yet would be released. It would involve her crashing, probably. Flagler County Fatal Crash, 195 northbound at MM296, multiple motorcycles traveling together. Approximately three motorcyclists went down, two motorcyclists pronounced deceased on scene. Roadway is currently blocked at this time, please seek alternative routes. That's what happens, get reckless, you will meet a fate that you shouldn't meet. But that's the way it goes sometimes. While Taylor was riding with a group of four other motorcyclists, the group would inexplicably begin to swerve and crash into each other, hurling each and every rider into the air and down onto the pavement below. With it all happening so randomly and so quickly that a large SUV heading straight for them was unable to stop in time, running over each of the riders. 22-year-old Taylor Scrome was pronounced dead on the scene, along with one other 29-year-old man. With this crash occurring just a single day, after this final TikTok post. Taylor's story is tragically ironic, though here on the internet you can find numerous other similar examples of final postings that led to unforeseen tragedy, with one of the most haunting coming from all the way back in 2008. Huh? Alright guys, I'm new here and I have a question. As I'm driving in M mode, with the car set to P500 Sport and everything set to max, as I shift with the pedal shifters, it sounds like the transmission is banging into gear. Like there is a thud that comes from the trunk when I upshift. Could this be due to the way that I'm shifting, or is this normal? And if so, is there any trick to working the shift? Let me say I am a beginner when it comes to high performance cars, as I'm only 18, so take it easy on me. This post was made by the user AmericanM5 on the website m5board.com, a forum dedicated to drivers who owned BMW M5s, a pricey sports car revered by many thanks to its high speed. 
In the thread, some users would leave genuine advice for the young driver, but many others responded with disdain, doubting that he actually owned this expensive car at such a young age, along with some who blamed his age on these issues that he was having with his vehicle. Maybe your two years driving experience in your whole life is the problem. This is the internet after all, and so for whatever reason, it seemed that many in the group took great offense to his youthfulness. But through it all, there were a select few who expressed concern for the young driver. As based on his posting, it was apparent that he had been driving the car very fast and potentially recklessly. With one user writing, I would much prefer an 18 year old with brains to have an M5 than spend his money on some other piece of junk that could kill him and his mates in an accident. My only bit of advice matey, if you crash in a big way, expect to be on the news. Enjoy and resist the temptation to drag others at the lights. As well as another user who commented, please be careful driving balls out. 18 year olds and M5s don't mix well. Fair. Fair. I'm working on getting my lessons now. I ain't ever gonna drive a fast car properly. Unless I really can afford one because they are very expensive. My goal is just to get a car in general. Following this, American M5 would leave a comment thanking the entire forum for their input, even those who reacted negatively to his post. Thanks guys, don't get me wrong, I never said I didn't respect your wisdom. Thanks for the welcome and I am looking forward to getting to know you guys better, Josh. And I plan to have all the pics up tomorrow. With this last line referencing taking photos as proof that he did in fact own the car that he claimed to. These photos, however, never came. No. As a matter of fact, following this comment on January 25th, 2008, American M5 went radio silent, which is when things started to take a concerning turn. The very next day on January 26th, news would break of a high-speed accident having taken place at 3.54 in the morning near Jacksonville, Florida, involving a car filled with five occupants, all between the ages of 18 to 20. According to the report, the group had driven their car onto a private airstrip in the area and had been driving at dangerously high speeds. Before, the driver lost control and ended up soaring off the edge of an 85 foot high embankment, leading to the instant death of all five inside the vehicle. With the driver being identified in the report as Joshua Amarado, an 18 year old who happened to be driving a BMW M5. The news immediately made its way to the thread, where one user commented, Hey, American M5 lives in Florida, is 18, drives a gray M5, and signed one of his posts above, Josh. OMG, I hope this is not him. And another saying, American M5, you better respond to M5 board ASAP, y'all worry now. Though Josh would never post to this thread again. And from that day on, no activity would ever come from the American M5 account making it all too likely that he was the one behind the wheel of that terrible accident. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this reaction video. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all for the next one.